Right, just had a little tiny rest, drink of water, took my jumper off, through there, I can see, guess what? Crook's Peak. There it is. Follows you everywhere and duty it is. Anyway, just had this little sit on the bench for five minutes. I don't, I can't ever st stay anywhere for long. I've always been the same. But I, I, I now realise it's nice to have a little break, get your lungs back. And there we go. Sat there many times. Now we do a steady plod up. After a while, you won't notice you're going up. Uh, you will in the beginning to get to the first gate. And then it eases up. And then it eases up when you're having a nice walk. A spring walk in a beautiful countryside. Along a beautiful West Mendip Way. On the 17th of May. 2023. <sighs> Prince Charles was crowned king a couple of weeks ago now. Russia's still fighting with Ukraine. President Trump and President Biden are campaigning for the next presidential election. as we will be in this country. The Conservatives always make a mess of everything and they shoot themselves in the foot. Then they're actually, I think they're quite glad to get out for a while, then come back in with glory because that's what they always do. They make a big mess. Labour go in, try to sort it out. And then the Tories get back in and rip off everything the Labour Party's done. Now, with Liberals, they're arse lookers, excuse the expression, they will side with whoever they think's winning. And they're kingmakers. They never get in on their own to be leaders. They ride on the back. Last time it was the Tories. Licking up to the Tories, they were. We couldn't believe it, really. Because in the past, they had mainly supported Labour. But when you've got millionaires running the show, come on, who are they going to support? You know, they're not... They're not people from mining backgrounds like the Canucks. No. Millionaires. The Prime Minister now is a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire. Sunak, I think he's called. Comes from another... Well, I think he might be English, but his origins are India, I think. I don't even know. But he's very English. I just wonder if he's got some hold over Charles. Because Charles was surrounded at his coronation with um, not what you would have thought of a man of his traditions. <sighs> Trying to make peace with everyone, especially them with the dosh. <sighs> Beautiful views, loves. Beautiful, beautiful wood. I'm taking my time. I can't rush. I know it's three o'clock. I want to enjoy the walk. I really do. Things with it being late, the bus, with it being a late bus anyway, you can't kick off early like I used to. 
I'm two hours behind what I used to be because the buses look at this scene so forget about the bus for the next half an hour shall look at that look at that lovely scene absolutely gorgeous everyone Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to take a picture. Right, I'm back on. on. Walking along the narrow path of the West Mendip Way. I think some people walk in the fields when the cows in there. And in theory, you can get over to the plantation. Um, I'm quite happy to go this way, to be quite honest. I'm quite happy to go this way. I love all this wild white stuff. I'm quite not sure if what bush this is. If it's um, oh God, no, is it a hawthorn? Is it? There's another word I can't think of it. Absolutely beautiful though, isn't it? Just to enjoy strolling along here. You see, years ago, ten years ago, maybe five years ago, I never used to potter like this. I used to march. <laughs> I have slowed down so much. Oh. I really have. I blame some of it on me breathing. You know? No sign of Glastonbury. Yeah, I blame some of it on me breathing. I'm not going through there, but there's uh, waves to look over to Crook's Peak. Now, you just go inside, you can see it from here, look. See? Right in, look, go on. Right in. I only you know, normally climb it about once a year. I'd go walks over there, but I don't always do the peak. It depends what mood I'm in. Brent Knoll over there. Glastonbury, it's too misty for Glastonbury. This is quite a bumpy route. It will get better. Like I said, when we get to another gate, a bit further up, the actual... Oh, there's somebody coming. Somebody coming. I'm gonna... I'll let you get through. I, I just wanted to get past that bit because it's a bit narrow. Gorgeous day, isn't it? Yeah. Stunning views. I know. I've walked from Winscombe up Crook's Peak and that. Oh, well done. Yeah, I'm just having a slow plod, you know. Well, enjoy yourself. Take care. And you. Do, do take care, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's a lovely view, look. He's gone already. It didn't take him long, do it? Hey, just up here. He got his phone out there. He could be signaling to someone else. Oh, I can't be bothered to worry about it. I wouldn't do nothing if I worried about it being attacked all the time. Oh, I wouldn't have done half the things I've done if I was worrying about that. I am on guard. Way behold them. Uh, 
Right, you've taken, there used to be a gate here, yeah? taking it away. I'm going to turn off for a bit now. We're halfway along now, we're nearly at the top. We've been walking steadily uphill for a good quarter of an hour, I'd say. Just had to uh, open the second bottle of water. I've drunk the first bottle of water and the first bottle of juice. I've got an orange. I've got another little bottle of juice and another and the bottle of water I've only had a sip out of. And there is a lovely cool breeze here. And the fields look lush, full of dandelions and buttercups, so beautiful. This whole walk, in June, by the way, every year hundreds of people gather to walk this route um, to raise money for charities. Quite often it's the Save the Children Fund, which I've done. I've done it twice with the Army Cadets. 22 mile walk. I'd done half of it once with the nurses when I was a nurse. We only did half. Um, and that was to raise money for leukaemia. Um, so I, I am familiar with this route. Of course, we're talking about 30 years ago. And in... Uh, what year was it? 1994. We've done this walk. That was with the nurses. But in 1989, 90, I did it with the army cadets. And we had to carry all, all our equipment with us. Now that is... A long time ago. That is. It's, a, it's about 35, six years ago, and I was not long finished running marathons. I, and I was a swimmer. I was a lot fitter 30 years ago. But it stood me in good stead for being 71. You know, because I, and according to ancestry traits and DNA stuff, I've got what's called the endurance gene. Uh, that's what, I've got three really important genes that are good. One's to do with oxygen uptake, um, despite that fact I had a heart murmur and everything. And what's the other one? One's endurance and one's something to do with the sprint gene, I think they call it. Um, my dad always said we were built like greyhounds. We had greyhound features, he always said. And there is endurance. His mother lived to near, apart from one month, my grandmother lived to 101. Her husband could have lived the same, but he got run over by a bus. My dad was 81, but he got shrapnel wounds in the war. He smoked too much and drank too much. So they didn't help him. Those two factors. They were environmental. And that's a lot of it is environmental that will get you. Oh, oh God, who's this coming? Sorry. So, open up a minute.